With Parkinson's disease, we have known for years, in fact, almost for uh, 60, 50, 60 years now, that there's a cell in the brain that's particularly vulnerable. It's called the dopamine neuron. And when that dies, in fact, when 75% of the midbrain, deep in the brain neurons die, you develop Parkinson's disease. Nobody knows really how to protect those cells or prevent them from dying, which is, you know, happens with aging. But with genetic forms of the disease, and they occur in relative rarity, so maybe 5 to 10% of patients who present with Parkinson's disease have it a genetic form. And in fact, uh, some of these forms are very, very rare, but they can increase your risk for Parkinson's disease maybe, it's hard to, to calculate actually, but 40, 50 fold. So what we did was to start a consortium based on a new technology that's very, co very uh, common now at Harvard Stemson Institute, and it's basically uh, a method that was developed in Japan originally by Yamanaka called induced pluripotent stem cells. The advantage is that you actually have a cell specific to that person, to you, that person. And every person, as we all know, have a unique genetic makeup. What we did was, for the first time, take skin cells from families with those rare genetic forms. And using resources in my laboratory and also at Harvard Stem Cell IPS Core, Harvard Stem Cell Institute IPS Core, we basically generated stem cells from these patients. And now we had a human stem cell for patients with high risk for Parkinson's disease. In some cases, they had already developed it. We could not drive those neurons into, differentiate them, as we say, into human neurons that actually are alive and function. And the question was, first, could we do that? We managed to do that, which was shown in this recent paper. The second thing is, how are these cells different? In most types of medical research, you are not able to study particularly brain cells, live because you don't have access to them. But now we had a dish full of human neurons that we knew had a high likelihood of developing the disease. We used that opportunity to see what they were vulnerable to, how the cells could use oxygen or function in many ways, and also what drugs we could use to perhaps prevent some of those changes. To our surprise, frankly, we found that the genetic changes caused quite dramatic changes in the cell. Even in the most immature cells, nerve cells, even before they became fully differentiated in nerve cells, we picked up differences. And our strategy was quite clear. We didn't look for the cells to initially just die, because this is a disease that takes, de takes decades to develop. But we would challenge them in different ways. And we used clues from previous science. And in particular, we knew that the cell's energy-producing organelle inside the cell the mitochondria and we, so we when we perturbed the mitochondria we saw immediately that the skin cells that had been made into stem cells into neurons were more vulnerable and in very subtle ways but we could also distinguish between different genetic forms of the disease so the reason this is exciting and our results show this is that we now have a way of looking at a window to personalized medicine we know that of the millions of patients out there, some with genetic disease, they have different reasons why they develop the disease. And it, it also is reasonable to think then that you will have to treat them with different agents, maybe different chemicals or methods to prevent the disease or, or slow its progression. And what was excited, exciting for us in many ways was that when we found differences between the cells and how they responded based on their genetics, we also found commonalities. So, all in all, this article heralds a little bit of a new chapter in neurology, which is that even though we have very common neurological disease for which there are no treatment, this type of cell biology provides a new tool for discovery of what happens, what goes wrong in the cell, but also for treatments.